Good morning, friends, and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. Today we are going to have lecture number two, and the title of this lecture is Communication Process and Roadblocks. Dear friends, you remember well that in the first lecture of public speaking, we had already discussed that public speaking is a form of communication. Now, all sorts of public speaking are rather communications. So, it would rather be pertinent to understand the mechanics of communication as to how communication process takes place we had briefly touched upon and how at times there are communication roadblocks or which we can also call communication barriers. Now, why should we call communication a process? As I said in the previous lecture, humans have an advantage over animals that humans can communicate better because they have words, they have sentences. But that does not mean animals do not communicate. Animals also communicate, but then there is a difference. Animals communicate through a stimulus response process. They communicate through their gestures majority of them are symbolic for us and if we live in their company for some time, we also start extracting their symbolic gestures. So, human communication process is an essential systematic method. Why should we call it systematic method? Because when we have words, we actually want to use words in the form of a sentence, fine. That is why we call it a systematic method. And there is a, a pattern, you know, the subject will come, then the verb will come, the object will come, and then depending upon the length of the sentence, you may have several adjuncts and whatsoever. So, human communication process is an essential systematic method, and it is actually a means to transfer information as well as emotions, fine. So, when we express our emotions, of course, sometimes we express our emotions through our, our body actions, but sometimes when we say something, we complement our emotions with the help of some of our non-verbal cues. Past surveys have indicated that an individual spends 75 percent of their time in some form of communication activity. We can always say that there is no time when a human being does not communicate. Now, you may ask a question that when we do not speak, do we also communicate? Yes, your silence communicates my dear friends. When you do not write, Sometimes you think that is also a process of communication, fine. And of course, the type may be different and humans always communicate and that can be uh, classified into four categories. We call them communication uh, skills, uh, meaning thereby when we do not speak, we listen. When we speak, we do not listen, fine. And when we neither speak nor listen, we either read or we write. So, these are the four forms of communication, human communication. Now, Raymond Ross, an author of a very famous book on speech communication, he emphasizes the need to bring awareness of the speech communication of mankind through which he says, our behavior will increasingly reflect openness. Now, when you want to know a person, 
when you talk to a person, uh, you come to know, because with the help of the communication that has taken place between two people, you come to know about his taste, habit, about his nature, whether he is a person who is uh, actually open or a person who is closed. Human communication also allows us to understand tolerance, sympathy, context for communication and caution with language. Imagine when a child cries, how does the mother come to know that the child is hungry? So, the child has not an access to language, but still through his cry, the child tells us that the child actually needs something to eat or something to drink. So, language, caution with language and greater respect for feedback, mutual influence and our dependence upon one another. Have you not found, my dear friends, that when there are two people in the same coach of the train and the two people do not communicate, then what happens? You find time becoming very tough. But when you start communicating, what happens? You start depending upon each other, is not it? What he says, what you say, it is actually a sort of mutual exchange for the two people and the exchange actually results in the form of communication. And that is possible only through feedback as we have been saying. Now, why do we need communication? The world could have been a happy place even without communication? No, not at all. Think of a person who is actually far from the madding crowd, living in a jungle, fine. He actually longs for human communication. Of course, from time to time, he may hear the sound of birds. He may hear uh, some sounds of even the trees, the roots of the trees. Sometimes, you know, he starts extracting meaning out of all these activities which go around him because man cannot live without communication. There is a, a one very beautiful poem uh, which is uh, entitled uh, Alexander Selkirk, where this Alexander Selkirk uh, went to live far from uh, the human touch and then there he started thinking of how human uh, accompaniment, human communication was actually needed. So, most of us, I mean majority of us rather, all human beings depend on communicative acts to carry. Now, this lecture which is being delivered, that is also a sort of communicative uh, act, fine. And this communicative act actually allows me to carry out my duty, to carry out my purpose to inform people, to make people understand the importance of communication and this will perhaps result in ensuring a better understanding not only between me and you, but also this will keep spreading from one uh, mouth to another. So, human communication has got a sort of vitality. This actually is a two way. Now, the moment I say two way, all of us understand that communication cannot be with one person, but then that perhaps would be wrong because at times when you are alone, again you are thinking. Imagine when you are having a sort of meditation. Meditation is also a form of communication, my dear friend, because your eyes are closed, but your mind is agog, fine. It is always said that human brain is composed of 12 billion working parts, 12 billion working parts and it has enough stories to accept 10 new facts every moment, every second. Now, how is it possible? So, when you are meditating, you are actually recalling an invisible force and you are trying to send your message. So, there is a sort of communication. So, again here I can say that again here even when a person is communicating, but it is actually a two way influence, a two way influence my dear friend. How is it two way influence? It is actually a two way influence. Sometimes you can talk to one person, sometimes you can talk to more than two persons. 
fine. But always and every now and then it has to be a two way process between two parties, between two people. When you talk about an effective communication, an effective communication comprises a well defined cause, a well defined cause. In most of the formal situations when you are communicating, either you are going to deliver a talk or you are going to participate in a debate or you are going to speak. You have some purpose, some reason is there and that reason actually will allow you to create your communicative act and help you think of the language as I have been saying even in my first lecture that languages will vary from one occasion to another. Now, you might all be thinking what actually are the purposes or the function of communication. Now, take for example, why this course? What is actually the reason behind this course? What actually is the function of this course? Either I am trying to share my knowledge with some people, either the information that I have gathered, fine, I am actually trying to disseminate. So, the first function of communication is to inform, you know, if you are uh, working in a corporate organization, say uh, in, in a company, you will find that every now and then communication practices are on. How? There are instructions, there are at times orders, there are at times, you know, a policy decision, there are also at times a talk about the launching of a new product, there are also times about new hiring policies, there are also times about uh, downsizing the organizational structure or employees, fine. So, all these are forms of communication. So, the functions of communication are to inform, sometimes things may go wrong, no? Something happens and uh, the organization uh, members, the employees, they start thinking as to how to come out of that crisis. So, what can be done? It might have been the result of perhaps some of our colleagues lapse, mistakes whatsoever and then he or she may be called, he may be persuaded, sometimes there may be some other sorts of crisis also, somebody having a sort of breakdown, somebody having a sort of difficult time, but then the organization has to go ahead. So, what can be done? Persuade. No, managers at times when he has to have a sort of deadline and work during a particular time limit. So, what he does? He calls people and communicates with them. He gives a small talk and that talk may be persuasive and he actually will draft it in such a manner that everyone will start thinking that it is going to be a sort of collective responsibility of each and every individual. Sometimes you find that there has been a, a sort of loss to the company, is not it? And for that loss, now how the loss we can overcome, how we can come out of it. So, for that sometimes you feel that the morale of the employees has come down and they actually require a sort of motivation. So, the people on the lofty positions, they will come and they will try to motivate these. There are such situations in other forms of communication also. For example, when you are giving a speech, when you are giving a presentation, when you are in a group decision, when you are in a debate, when you are in an interview. So, sometimes or the other, any of the function of the communication will materialize when we talk about communication in true sense of the term communication. Now, talking about the purposes of communication, of course, we know that we have either to inform, to persuade or to motivate. But how to do that? There are different ways, is not it? There are three main functions as we have already talked about, but then a speaker through his act of speech, through his act of speaking has to perform uh, these roles, either to inform or to persuade or to motivate. But then how he or she can do that? When somebody has to inform, naturally we inf when we inform, we actually share facts at times. 
and then while informing you know there are many occasions when the boss is going to inform the people of the new policies of the organization. So, unless and until the speaker himself, the boss himself is clear. So, clarity is first, he has to be clear, clarity. Then comes interest. Of course, the boss may be clear, but the boss will have to generate interest among other colleagues or other co-workers as to why this is important, why should we go, why should we uh, have a sort of office where no paperwork will be done. You know, you will find every now and then when something new comes, uh, there is a sort of resistance and the resistance is from those people who are old, senior most and all. So, in such a situation, we can as, you know, as the person who is leading can say that we are going to have a paperless office. So, how can we have that? Unless until we are clear. So, you will have to create an interest among them. Now, we are going to provide all of you a sort of laptop. You do not need to write anything on paper. And you know, again, when such a situation arises, maybe sometimes they can say work from home, WFH. So, and then many people would think uh, that it was always better uh, to work in the organization, but then you are giving an extra advantage or you are giving a new motivation. What? you are providing them uh, a sort of, uh, you say a laptop or a new device or a new software or whatsoever, so that they can be convinced, they can be properly informed. Unless and until the speaker is clear, this understanding cannot be built my dear friend. So, the very first function of communication is to inform and it requires clarity, interest and understanding. The second is, to persuade. How can I persuade the other person unless and until my own belief is not clear? Unless and until I do not believe in a particular thing, how can I make others believe? So, in order to persuade people, there are three things that require attention. The first is belief, action, stimulation. So, belief, I believe in this thing. And then what I am going to do? I am going to take some action. And once this action is taken, others are also stimulated. I can give several examples. Imagine I am going to use a laptop, fine, and other people who are not conversant with it. So, what I will do? I will tell them ah, that it is very easy. No, it is a MacBook. No, fine and it is faster, fine, you, you can store everything in it. And when I, with my own belief, tell them and I am having a sort of action, then naturally all others will be stimulated. And the last function of communication is to entertain. Communication does not mean always to inform or to persuade or to motivate. There are times when you actually take communication to entertain people also, fine, because life is not only full of work, life also requires some amount of fun, some amount of relaxation. So, in order to entertain people as a speaker, what the speaker requires is interest. He must have an interest in that particular activity in which he is going to entertain people. Then enjoyment. He must enjoy that. For example, I as a teacher, I enjoy teaching, is not it? So, when I deliver a talk, I feel uh, that I am more than a parliamentarian, fine, because all my students are here listening to me. So, a teacher can get this impression and sometimes or the other, the same way if an actor who loves acting, if he talks about his own profession and he uh, he enjoys his own work, he can also stimulate others, he can also create entertainment. But for this, what is required is something additional, sense of humor, sense of humor. We will find that even in some of the entertaining speeches, humor plays a vital role because it actually allows you to relax yourself. It is very difficult, my dear friend, to create humor. It is easier to make people weep, but it is very difficult to make people laugh. 
And for that, you require a different sort of language, which we shall talk when we go to that section. Now, as I have been saying, that when we talk about communication as a process, what is needed is you must be conversant with a sort of model of communication. There can be several models, but I have simply taken Laswell's model, Laswell, whose model is a linear one. Here you can see uh, in this uh, pictogram uh, that who speaks, who is a source, sender, what does he speak, message, what channel does he make use of, medium, and then who is he speaking to? We have already said that you need a sender, you need an ideation, you need a message, you need a channel, you need a receiver. And finally, what is actually the effect? What is actually the response? That is very important. So, who says what, in what channel, to whom, with what effect? So, if you have a look at this, you will realize that communication is, as I said earlier, it is a systematic process, it is actually a systematic method. Now, you also might understand that communication can be two types. One is a verbal, the way I am speaking, no, verbal communication, making use of words. The other may be non-verbal. So, one also needs to understand the difference between verbal communication and non-verbal communication. In verbal communication, you use words, sentences, paragraphs, whatsoever, fine. But in non-verbal, it is not only the words, but you can also make use of non-verbal cues, non-verbal symbols, traffic lights, fine. Sometimes sounds also, these sounds can also provide meaning. So, when we talk about the verbal communication, it can be written, it can be oral, you can write a document, a letter, a report, a memo, a proposal, a technical description, fine, whatsoever, a research paper, fine, you can write an email, fine. And then there are also oral forms of communication where you are using words like me, I am here speaking, but then what am I doing? I am not only speaking my difference, I am not only using words, I am also using non-words. If you might be able to see me, you might be seeing my facial expressions, you might be seeing the way my hands enact a sort of drama. You may also realize how my eyes move from one corner to the another. You may also realize how I shake my hands, how my body moves how at times I create signs, how at times I create gestures. So, there are two forms of communication as I have been saying, verbal and non-verbal. And here, one point of caution is, if you are going to make a verbal communication, a verbal communication becomes effective if it is to be spoken with the help of non-verbal cues. That is, that is what the example is here, a teacher delivering a talk, he is not only making use of words, but he is making use of all his facial expressions, eyes, fine, his face, fine, his lips, his voice. So, communication to say it exactly or precisely is a combination of both verbal and non-verbal uh, cues. Now, let us also have a sort of classification here, we can see the verbal communication and the non-verbal communication. The verbal communication can be public speaking, conversation, fine, interviews, fine. But the non-verbal communication, when we have non-verbal communication, as I said, you can make use of your body language, where your silence also speaks, where your pauses also speaks. You know, silence, as I have been saying, silence speaks more than words, fine. Where your gestures speak, fine, isn't it? Uh, you can also talk uh, to some people and say, and you say, when I said something, I do not know why the other person reacted in a very violent manner. I think his language, his body language is not proper. I actually find a different sort of meaning in it. That is why when you are communicating, especially when uh, publicly you are communicating, people are looking at your body language and your facial expressions as well, in order that your verbal and the non-verbal uh, cues or the non-verbal language, they have a sort of combination or a sort of commingling. 
Now comes the choice of or medium of communication. Now, as I have been saying, that a sender will have to decide the choice. Sometimes when a message is not responded to and people get quite you know, frustrated, they have to realize that there might have been something wrong, which we shall discuss later, as we call that roadblock. So, what was the impediment? Perhaps I did not choose the right medium. I was actually communicating to one of my teachers who did not have any access to technology and I had been uh, looking for him over WhatsApp, but he does not have a WhatsApp connection or he's, he does not have an access to WhatsApp. So, thinking in that way, you can only realize what actually was skipped, what actually you could not take into consideration. When you choose a wrong medium, the choice of a wrong medium does not allow the intended meaning. You might have at times seen that when you write a letter, you are very particular about the choice of words. But sometimes, even when a letter comes to you and you do not respond, fine, there might be some reasons behind. Either you did not like the message or perhaps you are not able to decipher the meaning because it was written in such a way, sometimes somebody says you something that may be a, a, in a very satiric vein, but perhaps you could not understand, fine. So, there are end number of ways the way you can communicate. Value of the medium in the given situation can at times be called a sort of media richness. Now, what is this media richness? In today's world, all of us have different, you know, uh, medias at our disposal. You have all sorts of facilities. Now, when you are going to choose a medium, you have to think of your receiver, who the receiver is, whether the receiver has got an access to it or not. We are living in a world where we expect that everyone perhaps might be quite friendly with all these apps, but have you ever thought of your old teacher? who is in his 70s and does not have any access to. So, in that way, your media richness may not be as effective thinking from the point of view of your receiver. So, media in order to have something as a sort of media richness, one has to be quite aware of whether you are communicating for a formal occasion or an informal occasion, whether you know how to make proper use of media, fine. There are certain determinants of media uh, richness. The ability to convey a message with the help of multiple informational cues. Now, it is what happens. Uh, you write a mail and you send a message and then you WhatsApp and then finally, you also write a letter. You have so many things at your disposal and then if nothing comes out of it, then you finally call. So, you are having a sort of media richness, multiple mediums you have. In order to get an instant feedback, now people use different sorts of media. Sometimes, uh, you know, if it is a routine matter, you simply send it as a part of message or sometimes if it is of an ordinary uh, nature, you simply write a mail, but if it is urgent, what do you do? You either call or if you understand that the person has got an access to WhatsApp, then you start a WhatsApp call because somewhere or the other, if the person might be online, perhaps he will be able to pick up your call and get the information. Now, uh, let us have a look at the media richness. There are richer mediums also, face to face. No, I have to get uh, something, you know, instantly. So, in order to get an authentic information, what do I do? I believe in a face to face communication. Sometimes I also think of telephone and email, but depending upon the nature and the function or the purpose of what I want. The media uh, can be leaner also. Say for example, a report has been sent, fine. When a report has been sent, you think that it was just mandatory to send a report, but that was not urgent. Had it been urgent, you could have called the other person and said, sir, the report has already been uploaded. The report has already been sent, fine. 
Sometimes many business letters also can be at times routine, but if it is urgent, no, what happens? People nowadays are using voice mails also. You put the information in the voice mail, so that the moment the man comes, man may be out of office, but the moment the man comes and he simply looks for, he will get uh, the message. So, there are ways and you are the best judge to decide what sort of medium you are going to choose. Public speaking as I have been saying, it is a sort of communicative act. Why communicative act? Because for many regions, you will understand at times you want to win over a crowd. Here let me give you an example. If all of you are conversant uh, with uh, Julius Caesar, uh, you might have uh, known that Julius Caesar uh, was killed. And when Julius Caesar was killed, it was actually Antony, fine, who felt that it was not proper. People believed that Caesar was a traitor. Now, what he did? He actually wanted to turn the table. And in order to turn the table, what he could have done? He was actually looking for an opportunity so that he can speak to people. And then some way or the other, he managed to win the favor of the conspirators and then the conspirators allowed him to speak on Caesar's funeral. But my dear friend, that was simply a ploy. When he got the permission and he spoke, the mentality of the mob was changed, my dear friend. If you have a look at the entire speech, you will uh, know how Antony crafted that speech in such a manner that the entire crowd at the end of it started saying, Caesar was not a traitor, Caesar was actually a patriot. So, to win over a crowd, you will find that public speaking skill is required both inside and outside the workplace. At the workplace also you require it and in other circles also you require it. In such a situation, what is to be done? If you have a look at that speech, you will realize how the language has to be fluid, how the language has to be intriguing, fine, because Antony always used to say, here with the permission of the conspirators, fine, where is the permission of the other people, I am going to speak, fine, Caesar was my friend, fine. And, and then the lines are, and then he says, Caesar was ambitious, fine but Brutus is an honorable man. Now, you see how he actually with the help of his words, how he changed uh, the mind and the mood uh, and the mentality of the people. So, making forward strides is equally essential in order to make a strong case. But then you also at times speak to motivate people, fine. Public speaking has a lot of opportunity where you can get an opportunity and with the power of motivation, you can influence people. Have you not seen many of the insurance agents who first they visit you, again the next time they visit you and they tell you of all the facilities, all the felicities of a, po a policy or whatsoever, they have to uh, uh, sell it and then finally after two or three visits. He has actually been able to win over you and the third or the fourth visit, you say, okay, I will buy this policy. How is it possible, my dear friend? This is only because of his motivational skills. And then there is another thing that is to inform as we have already discussed. When you are giving an informative talk or speech or whatsoever, it has actually to be factual. And to tell people the facts is a challenging act. Here you have to demonstrate not only by supporting, by argumenting, by providing the proper evidence because facts are essential to support any form of persuasion even when you are going to inform people. Now having said all this uh, that communication is an effective way to win people, to persuade people, to inform people. But why do at times communication fails? Why there is a sudden deadlock? Why there is a roadblock? What may be the regions? We all communicate 
uh, with the best of our purposes, but at times communication fails and we call that communication roadblocks or communication barriers. There may be different regions, my dear friend. So, first is language barrier. When you have crafted a message or you have crafted a speech or any piece, what sort of language you are going to use? Maybe you do not realize the people you are going to address, they do not know your language, fine. Maybe you are speaking in a language which the others are unable to interpret, fine. So, you have to have a common language. Even in a common language, how you have actually combined it, how you have woven it, that is very important, fine. The language has not only to be favorable to them, but the language have to be a sort of familiarity. So, language barrier may also arise if you are speaking in a very casual manner, fine, people may understand, but then that are not according to the standards of the occasion. So, if you speak informally, again there may be a barrier. You tell people informally about a policy, they will not realize. But if you tell them in a formal manner, they will realize it. Sometimes, because you come from a different uh, profession and you are going to tell people and you make use of a lot of jargons. These jargons are the technical words. Maybe if somebody tells me about thermodynamics and all, I would not be able to understand because the jargons of thermodynamics I am completely unaware of. I am rather a fool, fine. So, the same situation may arise with other people who are not conversant with jargons. So, if there is too much of formality, people would not be able to understand and then there can be a barrier. And then the clarity in terms of the words that you choose depending upon the occasion, is not it? Fine, if I am speaking on a particular occasion where I must know what sort of use. The occasion may be ceremonial, the occasion uh, may be celebratory, the occasion may be for entertainment. So, for all these things, you have to be quite aware. Otherwise, our communication will end in a sort of miscommunication by different. Sometimes there can be another uh, sort of barrier which is psychological. The psychological barrier as the word itself says, it comes from psyche. No two men are alike and when we are communicating, sometimes we may have an argumentative mindset, sometimes we may look at only one side of the thing and we may be very much possessed of what we are saying. We actually call it intrapersonal communication, where we think that whatever I say is correct, whatever they say are wrong. How does this happen? We actually start believing that I only know everything, there is a sort of allness syndrome and this also puts a break in communication practices and then at times we are not aware of emotionality, fine, people's emotion and then also if a person is in a great crisis and then you want to communicate with him, then unless and until you realize his moods and mind, perhaps communication would not matter much. Then there can be barriers arising from the culture, no two cultures are alike. So, but then as people, we always believe our cultures to be the best. And when you are talking to a person across the culture and if you are going to impose your own culture upon him, there cannot be a proper communication. So, cultural barriers can also arise. We actually, even, even you know at times it so happens that a man and a woman are talking. So, you have to be aware of their gender as well my dear friend, because what may be true in your case may not be true in their cases. So, do not bring stereotypes, what may happen to one culture may not happen to other culture. We can have a separate uh, lecture on this if possible. And moreover, do not ever use an abusive language, something that is true in your context. You know, there are uh, many examples uh, where you know one cultural practice which is very vibrant in one culture may not be because you know every culture has its own superstitious beliefs, has its own myths and they interpret a message accordingly. Say for example, in China, if you are going to present somebody with a clock under the impression that I am going to give him time, I mean from the next day onwards, there will be a rift between you and him. Because in China, it is always said that if you are going to present somebody with a clock, you are perhaps inviting evil for him. Then there can be physical barriers. Nowadays, as we rely too much on technology, every room is a budge with technology. 
So, at times it so happens there may be physical barriers, physical roadblocks. How? Sometimes the environment may be very noisy, so many people in the other room and I can hear everything and they perhaps also might be hearing and then perhaps I am not able to concentrate on my task. Sometimes the poor structure that may also result in a sort of communication barrier in a lecture hall where you know the sound is not properly fixed, again there can be a problem. Even the dais is not properly located, then there can be a problem. So, sometimes when you are communicating, it is always expected that as a speaker you check the gadgets much in advance because there may be at times a, a difficulty or an impediment in the channel. Sometimes there may be technical issues. Sometimes you brought uh, the uh, pen drive or the external hard disk and you are actually uh, very much committed that today I will be delivering a talk which will be mesmerizing, but then at uh, that juncture your pen drive does not work. Fine, what will happen? Perhaps you did not realize that. So, that again can lead to a sort of barrier my dear friend. Then at times there can be barriers in terms of attitude. Many people may have different attitudes. So, unless and until you know their attitudes, again it is very difficult to communicate effectively with them. Uh, there can be personality conflicts. Some people may be very egoistic. Some people may be very close sort of people. Some people may be uh, outspoken. Some people uh, may be silence loving. There are different sorts of people. What sort of a person the other person is, you have to ensure much in advance in order to have a proper communication. And then lack of self-confidence. If you believe uh, that I will be in a position to make him understand my point of view, if you also are not biased, then perhaps communication may result better. Of course, there are many interpersonal barriers also, fine. Say for example, when you are speaking, you also should and every now and then you should be ready uh, to hear criticism. But if you carry a conviction that nobody can criticize me, perhaps there cannot be a proper communication. Then sometimes you try to defend even when you are wrong, when communication is going on and if somebody, suppose a group discussion is going on and your point of view is countered by somebody and you react negatively, perhaps communication will not take proper function. And then lack of mutual confidence, my dear friend. There are different ways when you can at times make use of offensive language, you can make use of cliche, jargons, slangs, euphemisms and double speak. So, all these you must be prepared that when you are communicating for a purpose, you have to be ready that a communication barrier or a roadblock does not arise. There are certain parameters that can be adopted for that. The very first is Think of your audience, who is my audience, audience awareness, we have a separate lecture on it, we will have a detailed discussion there. But then think when you are going to communicate, who is your audience members, young, adult, experienced, professors, environmentalists, uh, technocrats, engineers, doctors, whatsoever, depending upon that you have to craft your talk. Encourage candid communication, let there be an open atmosphere of communication. Let there be less number of levels. Sometimes it so happens that because of several levels, communication actually the real communication is lost. And as a speaker, you must always facilitate feedback. When you uh, make uh, use of your eye contact or eye behavior, you can understand uh, the way a person looks. He will some way or the other signify what he or she is thinking about. And then also one has to be very ethical. By ethical I mean uh, one has to understand that something that you speak or something that you are expressing may not be always correct. So, one, one must have a sense of ethical responsibility. Ethics is very important in public speaking as well. And then be generous and be patient. Avoid always making false assumptions. If you always make false assumptions that whatever I say will be taken for granted, then perhaps you are in a wrong box, my dear friend. So, a, a proper communication actually requires the uh, cordiality and cooperation, which I have been saying between two people, uh, the mutual trust, the mutual understanding 
and the understanding of the background, the understanding of their cultural ethos, myths and other things, even though it is a very difficult task my dear friend, but then as Bernard Shaw has rightly said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Most of us think when we communicate, we think that we have been able to have a sort of effective communication, but then that is an illusion because unless and until you get the proper feedback, the communication process cannot be complete. I hope I have been effective in terms of communicating what exactly I wanted to say. With this, we come to the end of this talk and we look forward to meeting you again in the next lecture, that is lecture number three. Thank you.